half in the bag. A king has his reign. And then he dies. It's inevitable. Prometheus has that. Hello and welcome to Half in the Bag, I'm Mike. And I'm Jay, and we just got back from seeing Prometheus. That's right, Jay. Prometheus is the new film from Ridley Scott, which is about aliens, but not necessarily about aliens. Prometheus tells the story about a group of scientists that travel to a distant planet to investigate the origins of mankind because of some mysterious alien clues that they find. When they get there, everything goes well, and there are no problems whatsoever. By the way, did you know that Prometheus had a different title originally? It wasn't always called Prometheus? Mm -mm. What was What was the original title? It was The Girl with the Dragon in Her Cooch. What did you think of Prometheus? Uh, this is a difficult one to, to kind of wrap my brain around. My initial thoughts, uh, first thought right after leaving the theater was mostly positive. Uh, there's been a lot of negative backlash to the movie and my first thought after seeing it was, what's the problem? Yeah. What's the fucking problem? People saying it's the worst thing since the Phantom Menace and it makes zero sense and blah, blah, blah. Uh, it's, called, it's this thing called hyperbole. Mm. It's very popular with the kids these days. Yes. Visually, it's, it's uh, incredible. It's, it's great looking. Ridley Scott is really good at sort of building believable worlds, oh, uh, sure. lived in worlds, and it does that well. He's, as, he's almost as good as, the, as George Lucas, particularly uh, Star Wars Episode Two. Well, my initial thoughts after leaving the theater was, where's the bathroom? Then after that, I thought, ah. And the first half of it is uh, fantastic, I would say, as far as the pacing and, and doling out information and getting you intrigued in what's happening and, and building this very sort of believable universe. Yeah, uh, yeah. It's great with all that stuff. Yeah, the set design, the look of the movie, um, the props. All the details are really good. Yeah. That's, that's what I like about Ridley Scott. Um, I don't think he's, he's, he's an atmospheric director, but, but like human elements always seem sort of kind of hazy, especially like movies like Blade Runner yeah. and stuff like that. I, I would say Alien is very natural and, and uh, yeah, 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 I mean, there's exceptions, but something like Gladiator, you yeah. know, it's like, okay, it, it, it's, the look of it is really great. The style is really great. It's, it's almost like, there's, there's always just a tiny bit of disconnect. But yeah, uh, that's, that's, that's his thing. And building the tension and kind of, I like the pace of the movie. Um, I like the kind of, it felt like a science fiction movie. Yeah. It didn't, feel, it didn't feel like science schlock. A action fantasy garbage, which yeah, is what a lot of movies yeah. are these days. So it's not Battleship. But um, with all that said, it, it, it still has this confusing nature to the movie where you have to stop and go, is this movie too smart for me or am I too smart for the movie? There's a lot of things in the movie that are left either open-ended or not explained and I don't want to be so quick to dismiss it. There's a lot of that, like people online immediately after seeing it writing, it doesn't make any sense, you know, immediately. And I'd like to give the movie more credit because Ridley Scott's a smart filmmaker and I don't know. It, it felt like they were setting things up for a future movie. I don't, there was a lot of well, that. Well, didn't they do that with seven seasons of Lost? Well, that's that's the thing, is this movie was written by Damon Lindelof. And that's why I question if the movie is smart or if it is just setting up a lot of nonsense. Yeah. Because there were seven seasons of Lost. I was, I was big into Lost uh, for a long time. There were the detractors that said, ah, oh, they don't know what they're doing. They're just making it up as they went along. And it really felt a lot more sure-handed than that, which is why I was like, no, it's building towards something. You can tell. And then you get towards... Uh, the end of the series and you realize that it's all nonsense mm -hmm. and and I'm wondering if that's the case with this movie or not so I would like to give the movie more credit than that well in my opinion credit is only given where credit is due um, and and I've never seen lost for an, uh, just a note I saw the ending of it that's a great jumping off point for lost to yeah, start I just watched it. the last episode and I was like <laughs> the music was really nice yeah when everyone was in the church and you know I, I got all emotional and like <laughs> I'm gonna miss these characters. Yeah, I don't yeah. know any of them. <laughs> um, but uh, that kind of felt like the end of this movie where it's like, what's gonna happen now? Oh. It, it 
definitely had a lost feeling to it because the first half was really engaging and really intriguing. It was like, where's this going? They're they're looking for answers, and yeah. and then the movie raises more questions than it answers. And I appreciate the fact that uh, movies can sort of let you fill in the gaps or make you do some of the brain work. But I don't know if this is actually doing that or not. Well, I mean, there there is the whole subtext of the movie about religion and trying to find origins or your faith or what happens after you die. And there, there's all sorts of questions like that in, in the movie. And those are questions that we can't answer in real life. So it's like that maybe that was imprinted on the whole movie. It's just sort of like one thing leads, one question leads to another question. The lack of resolution is sort of the point. I think so, but that's not a good basis for a movie. <laughs> yeah, well, not not this type of movie. Not this type of this movie. This isn't Tree no. of Life. It's, it's yes, a, exactly. I was it's just a science say that. fiction alien. But, but it's science fiction at its core has always been like uh, kind of reflecting on our own ideas or our own like um, society and all that. It's always set in the future or in the past or whatever. It's science fiction, but um, it's always, uh, it always has some sort of relevance, you know? Yeah. And Alien was just a, like a, it was a horror movie, essentially. Well, that's, that's another thing too, is obviously this is somewhat of a prequel to Alien and Alien is a, a very, very, very simple story. It's a slasher movie in space. Right. It's it's the the ten little Indians. It's each crew member getting picked off one by one, and this is a movie that has sort of bigger ambitions than that. Yeah, uh, bigger ideas. Bigger ideas, and the bigger your your concept, the more complicated your story, the easier it is to blunder, and the easier sure. it is to sort of get off track. And I think. I think that may have happened with this. I, I don't know. It's so hard to wrap my brain around this movie. Well, that's the thing. There's this audience reaction element where it's like, is this an alien prequel or is it not? And, and, and then I think people see that and the marketing definitely reflected that. Like, this is Ridley Scott from the director of Alien. Yeah. Well, Comes the, a movie the, that looks just like Alien. Well, the teaser trailer was cut exactly the same as the teaser trailer for the original Alien. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there's that noise. Oh shit, there it is. Did you hear it again? Oh my god. Are we dead or dreaming? Or are we in limbo? Is, that a, is there a smoke monster? We're all here because of a map you two kids found in a cave. Not a map, an invitation. From whom? Please tell me you can read that. Well, what do you think the best element of the film is, Jay? Do you think it's the performances? No. What? I think the best element of the movie is the visuals and the atmosphere and, oh, sure. and, and the direction of everything. Yeah, everything felt so real. Like yeah. there was nothing where it's like, oh, that's a special effect. Yeah. Uh, it just felt, it felt so, it was so unique, well, that's, so that's, well done. Yeah, and that's the same with Alien and the same with Blade Runner where it just really feels like these lived in environments and these real, yeah. you know, uh, worlds that these characters are inhabiting. The one thing that kind of distanced this from Alien is not that the actors were bad in it, they were all very good. Maybe it's the dialogue, but in the original Alien, it feels very, almost uh, improvisational, the way the, the yeah, people interact with each other. Back. It feels like someone just, you know, was rolling the camera and people were just casually talking and it's great. Yeah. And this one feels more like a, like a movie in that aspect. Well, there's the George Lucas, it's like poetry, it rhymes kind of thing, because like you got uh, Numi Rapace, one of the best sequences in the film is when she goes into this uh, thing to have surgery. Not so, one of the best, the best. The best. That uh, was the best scene in the movie. Yeah, and um, you know, and she's kind of running through the halls, and she's all, you know, she kind of had that Ripley vibe going, especially yeah. at the very end. And then, of course, the the closing. There's a closing monologue at the end. Yeah, which feels out of place. The, it, the it last did. like five minutes of the movie feel out of place. That's where it feels like, oh, we have to make it connect more to Alien. So yeah. we slap the or stuff on. Or we have on. to end the movie. Or we have to end the movie. Yeah, everyone else, really good. Uh, uh, Charlize Th Theron's. Charlize Theron was sort of distractingly pretty. She's, she's a good looking lady and, and that's fine in a lot of movies, but in this particular movie with her character, it was sort of like, She's trying to be sort of cold and, and mean. If you're really going down there, you're going to die. 
So yeah, as we've said, the, the first half of the movie is great. Uh, good pacing, good atmosphere, good tension. It's the second half, or two thirds of the way through, where the movie kind of starts to have some problems, I would say. Yeah, I, I have an issue with the ending. And I think you know what part I'm talking about. It's when all the... Oh, there was that noise again. Yeah. Maybe it means that we shouldn't say spoilers. Well, spoilers. Oh, shit. Okay, so if you've seen the movie, quick recap is these two scientists uh, find cave paintings all over the world, hieroglyphics, uh, stone carvings, etc., of a pattern, a solar pa pattern, planets or whatever, alien people going, oh, you know, and they all match up. So then they find this little solar system that matches up perfectly and they say, oh, let's go there because maybe it's a sign of some kind and the aliens want to talk to us. Yeah. Um, but there's also a secret old elderly man who wants to go there too. Well, they, they ha are of the mindset that these aliens are our creators. But how do they know that? How does this old man come to the conclusion that somehow going to this planet, they'll have the answer to eternal life? Why was it a guy in old man makeup? And the guy that got infected, he turned into something but, but what was he turning into? But he had a little fish come out of his eye. What was that? Why would they create humans and then uncreate them? What was the motivation of the alien guy? Maybe the black sludge was like a, like a, like a biogenetic liquid that created life. Probe is picking up. It's reading life form. What do you mean a life form? Oh, the head. They're changing. Changing into what? It's moving. These things moving. Well, what the movie seems to be hinting at is that the aliens in the alien movies are the result of lots of crossbreeding. Yeah. There's way too much of that in this, where you're like. This cross breeds with this, and it creates this, and then that thing breeds with this, and it's just like, yeah. why is this so complicated? Well, so, there were so many different creatures, and there were so many different, like, alien and aliens was such a simple concept. Yeah. And I have nothing against complicated concepts, but it was like, there's a queen alien, and she lays eggs. Yeah. And the eggs hatch and impregnate you in your face. Yeah. And then that's how they that's how they multiply. That's how they produce their offspring. That's how, you know. And it's like, okay, got it. Well, you can make a, a, a complicated uh, philosophical sci-fi thing if you want, but why even associate it with alien if that's what you're trying to do? It, it's completely out of place in that environment. Yeah, because aliens, alien and aliens and Alien 3, they're more visceral, they're more horror movie, they're more well, and this could have been that. I mean, like I was saying when we left the theater, the, the concept that you go off into outer space to meet your creator and you find out that your creator wants to kill you, like yeah. hates you, that's a terrifying idea. It's a that's, bleak concept. That's the plot to Star Trek V. Oh, the, the why would God need a starship? Yeah, yeah. What does God need with a starship? <laughs> It's true. Kim, you don't ask the Almighty for his ID. Yeah, it's a, it's a great concept, and it's a scary concept, and you could have turned that into a standalone movie, maybe have some loose connections to aliens, but it's all the random stuff that's in here with the black sludge and all these different uh, uh, hybrids of creatures that are, it's just like, why is it so complicated? Yeah, yeah. Uh, why does it need to be this complicated? Yeah. Is it a facade? Uh, is it is it not a smart movie that's kind of pretending to be smart, to and leading you down misleading corridors and yeah. like uh, dead ends and this and that and motivations and what is the payoff? And the, the, it sort of ends on like, well, I'm gonna go still find answers. Yeah, it, it doesn't answer much by the end. It's the, it just goes in a circle. They're leaving. To go where? Earth. We were so wrong. Take us home! If you don't stop it, there won't be any hope to go back to. Why is that door open? Got it out! Got it out! 
And as I said before, I don't want to be too dismissive of the movie immediately. While watching the movie, I, I enjoyed a lot of it. Uh, as we said, visually it's amazing. Um, I just don't know what the ultimate point was, and that's the frustrating part. Yeah, well that's why you have to watch the next film, when Nomi Rapace flies a spaceship to the alien. To another planet, and says, I want answers, and then all sorts of shit happens, and they fly away, and she goes, I gotta go to another planet and get my answers. She's trying to find the Jesus. Yeah. So, yeah, reboot of the Alien series, re refresh, refreshing, refreshments? Re Re-prequel. Re-prequeled. What did you think of the Alien franchise overall? Well, the Alien franchise is uh, interesting because there's, you know, when people talk about a series of movies, like there's Star Wars and there's things that are a continuing story. Mm -hmm. And the interesting thing about the Alien franchise is that they're all the same movie. Yeah. They're all the exact same story, just told by different filmmakers with completely different visions and different ways of approaching the material. And that's one of the things I always thought was interesting about it. So this is the first time that a filmmaker has kind of come back to that yeah. universe, sort of. Um, but at the same time, the structure of Prometheus is very similar to the original Alien. Well, especially the, the first act of the movie, they land, they find the ship, yeah. they get out, they're walking around in the spacesuits, there's all the pods. You know, it's, it's visually, it's like identical to the first Alien movie, and that's where you're like, is that a remake? It, it's it's or, sort of a remake, yeah. Yeah, and you're like, okay. It's a remake with a, with a, a heavy dose of psychological, religious uh, theory and, uh, and, and, and an excessive amount of fart jokes, which I was not expecting. What's that? You need to stay calm, okay? Uh, come in Prometheus. And then, yeah, I, I haven't seen the Predator versus Alien stuff. I saw the first one and it was so bad I didn't bother with the second one. So, I mean, it's good that they're attempting a reboot. Like I said, Star Trek ran out of gas. Aliens ran out of gas. It's a, it's a franchise that people know, but uh, they didn't want to go full on and go 100% Alien prequel. You know, maybe because people don't like prequels now. Um, and maybe people don't like reboots, so they, they're straying away from going either direction and just say, eh, and then, and then and it's that ambiguity that of what it is yeah. it is what probably confuses and has turned off people, well, it, other it, than critics, who, who can recognize it as a well-made movie. It's an incredibly well-made movie, and that's probably something we should bring up uh, in regards to the hate towards this movie. We should go into that a bit. If you're one of those people that gets that upset over this movie, you should probably stop watching movies altogether. In, in a world of, of Jack and Jill's and what to expect when you're expecting and movies like that, uh, uh, an ambitious but incredibly flawed sci-fi film, if that's what gets you horribly upset, then there's no hope for you. I, I, I will agree and disagree. Okay. Coming off the trailer, the trailer was great. And you're just like, wow, you yeah. know, you sh get chills. It's like, cool. And Ridley Scott coming back and all that. It was, it was like Phantom Menace, you know, like coming back, you know, and doing it again, the, you know, the, the creator of the original. And it had sort of that vibe going. And then I, I can see people being disappointed. Disappointment but, I can understand. I would say I was slightly disappointed. But not, but it's the worst movie ever. It's, it's slight dis, a slight disappointment, but wow, there were some really good scenes in this movie. Really great scenes, good performances. Uh, people talk about like Avatar and how it sort of creates this whole world that's believable. I was more in, uh, interested in this world than that. Like in Avatar, it just looks like every time it cuts to the blue guys, it looks like a Pixar movie right, or something. And right. here, like, it's a real believable environment that, that Ridley Scott creates. And there's a there's a real style to it, too. Yeah. Yeah, so that was the appeal. Uh, uh, and, you know, trying to mix in a, a, a religious, psychological uh, 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 faith element into it. And, yeah, it could work out. Nope. I, I like that it had ideas, at least, mm -hmm. even if they didn't pay off. Has there ever been a a director that's sort of returned to a, a, either a, a franchise or a genre of film that he participated in as a younger filmmaker, come back to it and have it be successful? Have the, it worked uh, Yeah, completely? George Romero's Land of the Dead. <laughs> <laughs> John Carpenter tried to come back with The Ward recently. Um, 
Has it ever worked completely successfully? Oh, Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. I'm done with this series. Oh, these are the opposite of what you're looking for. Right? Yeah, you're, you're, you're saying the oh, exact okay. opposite of what I mean. Um, I guess maybe Sam Raimi, Drag Me to Hell. Although even that had some like like horrible CG decisions to use CG where it wasn't appropriate. <laughs> The only filmmaker I can think of that's actually accomplished that would be the great Frank Henenlotter, who did Basket Case and Frankenhooker. He came back after like 15, 17 years and he made Bad Biology. And I would call that a triumphant return. I was born with seven clits. Would you say the Star Trek Voyager episode of Prometheus was better than Prometheus the movie? I don't know anything about Star Trek Voyager. There was a ship in Starfleet called the Prometheus. Mm and it had four engines just like the Prometheus in this movie. Do you think Damon Lindelof ripped that off? I, I think what you're trying to say is that Damon Lindelof and Ridley Scott are horrible hacks and, and they're worthless filmmakers and you could make a better movie than them. Is yes, that what you're saying? Yes. I guess we should note that we understand the concept of Prometheus and the, the name of it and what it means in Greek mythology and we get that part. Yeah. But I guess we just didn't get why there were so many squids in the movie and why squids climbed onto other creatures and why there were penises that came out of black goo. Yeah. I mean, I've seen a lot of penises come out of black goo before, but never like that. So overall, would you recommend Prometheus? Yes. Well, no. Oh, no. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I think I would. I, I would recommend it. It's a tough movie to pin down as far as does it achieve what it's trying to or is it not? Is it, is it just mysteries it, for the it, sake of mysteries? Yeah, I mean, if you're going to look at it as going like seeing a good sci-fi movie with good, good sci-fi elements and some, some tense moments and some good stuff in it, yeah. it's really satisfying in that regard. It's just some of the confusing, confusing plot elements and plot holes and like what's happening here, who's doing this, and overall just to watch it as an experience is worth it. So I'd recommend it, and unless you're just someone that wants to see Aliens, you know, the James Cameron Aliens movie, then it's not for you. Big things have small beginnings. Well, we should probably continue working on Mr. Plinkett's VCR, huh? Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh, let me put my, I feel like not official without my jacket on. Yeah, here, so. yeah, you need your work jacket we on. We gotta get back to work on Mr. Plinkett's VCR. It's though. actually a company rules that we wear our lightning fast VCR repair coats. Well, I, I wouldn't want to do anything that would make it comfortable. No. So. All right, let's go. Hey guys, wait a minute. What are you two doing here? Oh, we're not here. Mm.